because over the last eight games, he's averaging over 23 points on 50% shooting and 36% from deep. But the biggest difference is that he's taking care of the ball. He's averaging just three and a half turnovers per game compared to five in the last in the first 17 games of the season, right? But you know where the eyes of the NBA they're going to be tonight? They're going to be focused on San Francisco because when Steph Curry takes aim at the three-point record, everybody is going to be watching. He is 16 away from surpassing Ray Allen. Is that possible? Yeah. Is it likely? All right, not so much. But the other splash brother, right, Clay Thompson, he holds the single game record of 14 made threes in a game. And these guys, they just go back and forth because then Steph broke that, that broke Steph's old record of 13. But if anyone can do it, if anyone can make 16 threes in a game, it's Steph. But if he's going to do it, he's going to need to shoot early. He's going to need to shoot often. And keep this in mind, the most threes he's ever attempted in a game is 22. Oh, to be a Chase Center. To be a Chase Center, to watch the Chase, that would be fun. But you know who is going to be at Chase Center? That is Miss Roz Gold on Wude, who's going to be working the sidelines of tonight's potentially record-breaking game. Thank you so much for coming in, Roz. You spent some time with Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr earlier yesterday. How is he approaching coaching this potentially historical night? Yeah, Malika, first of all, I think you're right. It says a lot about Stephen Curry that he's 16 threes away from breaking this record. And we're like... It probably could happen. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. And so, you know, Steve Kerr yesterday at, at practice um, compared Steph to MJ in the sense that, you know, there's so many magical moments that they start to bleed together. And he said, perhaps that's a, the true sign of greatness. And then he also talked about the pace in which Steph has is approaching this record in the sense that he'll he'll get there in just about 500 less games than it took Ray Allen to. And Steve said it says a lot about how much the game has changed and how much Stephen Curry has changed the game itself. Mm. Philosophically, coaching wise, he gave credit to Mike D'Antoni and, the, and those Steve Nash sons as far as changing how we think about how many threes can be taken in a game. But as far as Stephen Curry as an individual how we get to those three-point shots. What is a good shot? Right. What is not? He said Steph has changed that. Well, and his teammates, right? I talked to Juan Descato Anderson at a game the other week, and he's like, I was watching the great Warriors runs, and now I'm on the court with some of those great Warriors. So how are they thinking about Steph breaking this record? Yeah, Juan is like you. He's from the Bay. He's from <laughs> Oakland, you know? So he was talking about how when he was watching the Warriors then, he actually was salty when they <laughs> traded Monte Ellis. And he salty. said, you know, shout out to sh- shout out to the decision makers who may- had that vision then. But now as a teammate of Steph's, he he's actually, it's like a childlike curiosity. He's in awe. He's actually asked Steph, what are you looking at when mm. you shoot? It brings out such innocent curiosity. And he, he actually laughed at himself. He said, I bet Steph thinks I ask him the most simple and dumb questions, but he genuinely wants to know, like, what is it like to be you? Well, there you go. And I can relate to that, right, Roz? Because this is a special interview for me because Roz, one of my very first job shadows ever was with you at a Warriors game, and I was one asking those questions. But, Roz, on the other side of the ball, right, Damian Lillard, Mm -hmm. he's out tonight with an abdominal injury, but he spoke in Mm -hmm. shoot-around. What did he say? Yeah, I'm at Chase Center right now. The Trailblazers just finished shop. Um, Damian Lillard addressed the media and he addressed um, the trade rumors and all of the kind of noise around the Trailblazers head on. And he said, I'm not asking for a trade. Um, He went on further to say, my intentions are to be in Portland and to figure this out. Um, Ultimately, he feels like because the team is having a slow start. There's injuries. Um, they're struggling a bit because there's commotion within the organization that people are taking a liberty to speak for him. And for him, he says, you know, the truth, the fact that I know it is what gives me peace. Um, speaking to Dane today, he said that, you know, he's working. He's in the office every day with Chauncey Billups mm. trying to find solutions. And he said, why would I be part of trying to find solutions if I'm planning an exit? So also in speaking with Chauncey Billups today and others around the organization, the relationship at this moment between Damian Lillard and Chauncey Billups is strong. And the two of them are working together to build a successful future together in Portland. And and that's the feeling around this right now. Okay, thank you so much, Roz. I really appreciate it. Enjoy the game tonight. This is going to be fun. All right, I do want to break this down. Yes, ma'am. 
I remember when you shadowed uh, and you were there with Stephen Curry. I have that picture, and you, for the next year, I'm going to send don't it. Don't you, you dare post that anyway. Anyway, don't post that. That's my Stanford sister, and I did the same thing. Information See? and Roz is yeah. that she is Roz is that she is someone who is the and I the same thing. Information and Roz is yeah. that she is someone who walks the walks, talks the talk. Yes. But someone else who's been talking the talk and there's a whole lot of walking and a whole I don't even know what's what in this metaphor is Damian Lillard. So what's your reaction, Richard, to what Dame said this morning at Shooter? Well, uh, again, you said it yesterday how transparent Dame is. Dame is one of those very consistent superstars yep. and I believe him 100%. But just like anything, both sides have to meet in the middle. And I truly believe that right now, the Portland Trailblazers, based off of what Woj is reporting, they're kind of trying to make a decision. You got looking for a new president, GM. I know you have an interim one. But there are people that are having conversations looking at Dame as an asset. And the minute the relationship you are in are not looking at you in like, how can we all do this forward? But also like, what are the other options out there? What are the other moves that we can make? That to me says that like this is headed towards something that, you know, maybe Dame might not be ready. Dame might say, I don't want to leave. And the new GM comes and says like, hey, this is going to be the best thing for the organization moving forward. Well, there's still time for this to play out. Just to remind everyone, right? We're not talking about this right now. I mean, no, no. Dame is under contract yes. for three more seasons after this one. We're talking about adding a two-year extension on on top of that, which he could have offered to him as soon as this summer. Chanae, how do you react to this? You know Dame incredibly well. Yeah, you know, I know Dame through the Team Adidas family, and he's been one of the greatest people, just not through knowing him in basketball, just period. And I think his life has really come to the point where the only thing he really needs is a championship and probably MVP. Mm -hmm. And if you can't provide an environment for that, it's either going to be forced upon him, right? Like you said, if there is a change or so. Yeah. Um, or, like, the pressures of, you know, being in your, your prime, 31 years old. Like, this is the time for Dame to really showcase his skills. And I'm sort of glad that he's had time to sort of step back because this guy has put in his work in the league. I keep bringing it up. He leads, like, the last five or six years in miles run in the NBA. He's always performed. A lot of people were critical of his performance at the start of this year. I was like, can this man breathe for a moment? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not even forcing the issue in the middle of the season. So I was like, just let's chill a little bit. But the reality is, I think in the next year or two, if you don't have something viable – Something has to be viable presented to him because his talent deserves a top tier team. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Even when I was in uh, New Jersey with Jason Kidd, one of the things that led to his trade to Dallas is that the Nets didn't want to give him an extension. And this is the historic guy, name in the rafter. He was like, I want a two year extension. They were like, well, we're not sure the direction we want to go. If Dame, if they're not just going to give Dame that two years, and I know it's 35-36, but a lot of times you're giving that 35-36 because you want what this individual can do for you now. If they're not saying, Dame, you are not leaving, we're going to pay you your money, and you are going to be the pillar until you retire, then Dame has to take a step and, back. And all athletes will take notice of that because this guy has been loyal to the soil in the community, both on and off the court. Mm -hmm. And so then if that is the case, then you know that it is truly a business. And don't be surprised when players make their own moves. Well, we're going to see how this shakes out. That's going to be a decision that the new general manager, we know they have an interim general, general manager, is going to need to make. That interim general manager, Joe Cronin, is going to speak tomorrow to reporters for the first time. Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, not on the court tonight against the Warriors, but Steph Curry will be. And if you think we're done talking about Steph Curry, then you don't really know NBA Today. Because coming up, we go to the top of the top of his best threes of all time. And after losing to Brooklyn last night, Luka Doncic admitted to being a little too relaxed in the offseason. So <laughs> how big of a concern is that for the Mavs? Plus the Bucks, they are undefeated with their big three this season. So what's the key to their success?